Hello and welcome back to MechWarrior 5.2 brought to you by Commando Gaming and Battletech Battles. And in this series we take MechWarrior 5 and we add a whole bunch of mods just to improve general gameplay and explore how they affect the base game. Now unfortunately there isn't a mod that currently improves the voice acting or some of the writing of the game which is a little bit problematic to be honest with you, but this is still an awesome game for games where you stomp and destroy the enemy. So don't let those storylines and voice acting bother you. I just kind of overlook them as much as possible. Um, but one thing these mods do is they do drastically improve the overall quality of the combat experience, which is what this game is really all about. So, as of the recording of this video, there's approximately 32 mods available. You can go to Nexus Mods. There are new mods that are dropped just about every day because this game has excellent mod support. And since the mods are stackable, and most of the mods generally address one certain thing, whether it's weapons, or where enemies spawn, or the HUD display, you can actually stack them together and get quite a comprehensive new game, which is why I call this series MechWarrior 5.2. So um, right now I'm running 17 mods and they've never conflicted with each other. I've never had any problems with the mod having a negative impact on the game. They've all been a lot of fun. In fact, I've added a couple more off camera uh, also off camera, I did do some missions while I was not able to record. Um, approximately seven or eight missions, mostly just grinding, nothing material in nature. Um, but I will say um, we did pick up this guy right here, which is on my screen. And I'm really excited about it. And it's kind of an interesting situation because in... MechWarrior Online, Battletech, and <clears throat> MechWarrior up to this point. This is a Banshee, and I've always found them kind of a running joke because they're very large assault mechs, but they have very little firepower, and they were kind of laughable. And I always dismiss them as a mech that I don't want to spend money on, I don't want to have in my mech bay. Up until I came across this guy, um... Recently, it's the Banshee 3S, and the 3S actually has tons of weapons. You do trade off some armor for having those weapons, but it's still a really solid 95-ton mech. Um, and it's currently being repaired, because I did use it off-camera. Um, but when once it's done being repaired, I'll show you how awesome this mech is. But um, I can tell you it does have dual PPCs, it has an AC-10, it has a whole bunch of medium lasers, and it has an LRM-10. So this is actually a pretty effective balanced mech. Um, normally Banshees I have zero interest in, but this one I had to buy because of all the firepower combined with the fact that it's a 95 ton mech. So it definitely was worth picking up. Um, so when I was <clears throat> doing some missions off camera, because I wasn't able to record, I was hit with a situation where I had to immediately stop playing. And I'm going to show you why. Because we found, when we went back to an industrial hub for repairs, <clears throat> we literally found the Holy Grail, folks. So... I've been looking for this mech ever since I heard about it, and it is here. The Irby K9. This is the best bonanza for gathering great weapons by the purchase of a mech if you look at the expense. So, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about right now. So the Irby K9 
you look at it, you're like, oh, it's just an Irby. I'd never want to have it, especially at this level of the game, when I have 95 ton max. But it's only 2.3 million. Let me show you what happens when we purchase it. So we're going to purchase this. Drop ship is currently full. Clear space by moving mechs into cold storage. Okay, I should have remembered I had to do this off camera. So I need to pick a mech and put it into storage. Problem is I've got so many great mechs right now. Um, and since I have a whole bunch of mechs that are being repaired, I can't put them into cold storage. So we're gonna take a Thunderbolt here Put that into cold storage. That's fine. All right. So let's go back. Now that I've made room for this bad boy. So I'm going to purchase. Now it's a hero mech. So it comes without any need for repairs. And let's look at why this is the best bargain for purchasing a mech in the game. All right, so we look at it. Uh, before we look at the details, we're like, ooh, Ultra Cannon 5. That's cool. That is lost tech. That's definitely worth having. It's two small lasers and a large laser. Those aren't really so exciting. Then we go to details. And we've got one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight double heat sinks. And an Ultra Cannon 5, all for the price of $2.3 million. But wait, it gets better. Because as I've shown you in previous episodes, we can actually take advantage of a little glitch. And it's worth taking advantage of simply because... I wouldn't do this if you could just buy double heat sinks in the market, but they're very hard to find. So this is what we do. We take our K9, we put it into cold storage. That immediately takes every component off, including the double heat sinks and the Ultra AC5. We put it back into the mech bay. And we can now sell it. We can't sell it for that much. It's only 630000 because it really, all of the value of the mech comes out of the double heat sinks and the ultra cannon. Once you take those off, this is just basically a trash can, as we know, because that's what an Irby is. So we're going to go ahead and sell it here. And you're going to say, wait, why would you sell a hero mech? I'm going to show you why. So we're going to go ahead and sell it going to get a, a little bit of our money back, right? Okay, then we go to our lovely star map. We go to the next system. And those of you that are here for um, battles might actually just want to fast forward for about maybe 10 minutes because I'm going to show everybody a trick on how to get all the double heat sinks and ultra cannons that you want. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So we, we get to this uh, other territory, and there's a rare mech Black Knight available. So let's take a look at that Black Knight. All right, it's really just a Black Knight that doesn't have any damage to it. Um, it's not a as exciting mech, but there is a stalker. Oh boy. Anybody who knows me knows that I love the stalker. Um, there's a victor here. I'm not excited about a victor per se, even though it was my dad's mech in the story. It doesn't really interest me. But the stalker for 5 million sea bills, I need to purchase because it's one of my favorite mechs. All right, so I got to make some room in the in the inventory for this stalker. 
So I think what I'm going to do is <clears throat> we have that Thunderbolt. I'm going to go ahead and oh wait, no, because I have to make room I've got this thunderbolt here. I'm not really in love with it, so I'm gonna. It's kind of one that I put together because I didn't have enough of everything. So let's uh, put that in there. So I mean, thunderbolts are great, but I'm I'm not gonna complain about switching out a thumb thunderbolt for a stalker that's a no-brainer so we're going to go ahead and sell this thunderbolt it's going to pay for half the price of that stalker which sounds like a great deal to me <clears throat> don't worry we're going to get back to the verbi trick so we're going to go back to the market i have to buy this stalker because that is too good to say no to. It's a really good price. It needs just some minor repairs and it's going to be up and running. So we're going to add this right now because the stalker is one of my favorite command mechs. We're going to purchase that one. I think we're going to be phasing out my Jagger mechs pretty quickly here now that I've got the Banshee, which I enjoy playing, and now that we just picked up this stalker. All right, so let's look at this stalker. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna get rid of the single heat sinks first and foremost. And this means we're gonna be doing some heavy modification of this, of this mech. So it's not gonna be available right away, but that's fine. Double heat sinks off, as I said, are the single heat sinks. I do like this this Mac actually because it has LRM tens and it's got large lasers. So <coughs> this could be a very nice build already but there's a couple things we're going to do better so first of all let's look at the market real quick i do have a lrm 10 streak available so we're going to purchase one of those so we're going to take the lrm 10s off Take those LRM 10 streaks. We're going to put those on. Oh, minor increase in firepower. Hmm. All right, let's look at the inventory. Do we have a better SRM 6 than what we have installed? No, we do not. So, but what I could do is we do have some SRM4s. Let's just two things. So that will save me some time. So I'm actually just thinking out loud here. I'm going to keep this build as is for now. The large lasers, <coughs> four medium lasers, SRM LRM20. This is a pretty nice build for a stalker. Um, but there's more. We still need to put some double heat sinks on. And thanks to our 
purchase of that Irby, <coughs> we now have plenty of double heat sinks. So let's put those on. And do not put them in the center torso. <coughs> That's kind of a bummer. So we're going to have to expose the double heat sinks by putting them on. <coughs> And we actually still have plenty of tonnage available here. Um, so do I need that many double heat sinks? <coughs> I'm not sure that I do. Let's max the armor first. That's a ton of armor for an archer. I like that quite a bit. And we can probably tweak this a little better. We can, so we can take off these tier one medium lasers. Put on tier twos. Very nice firepower. So we're already up to above 90 for an 85 ton mech. We still have some tonnage <coughs> left. So what can we do? So one thing we can do is we can give us a little more long range firepower. We can put on a PPC. can do is we can actually put on a second PPC. So we'll put on a second PPC. Slightly over tonnage, but that's okay. <coughs> because what we're going to do is we're going to strip armor, we're going to max armor. That gives us a firepower of 94 on an 85 ton mech and armor of 528. So this is a really nice build. Okay. <coughs> All right. So let's do the weapons groups here real quick. So I'm going to, I like to use the weapons group that is most common for me. As one. So that this is all personal preference here. So we're going to be doing four medium lasers on one. We're going to do the two PPCs on two. And we're going to do the LRMs on three. Now the question is, can we do the SRM sixes? And the medium lasers, we could do this, but we're not going to be able to fire the PPCs at the same time. Uh, let's give it a try. And we're not going to be using this thing for 81 days, so there's that. Start work. <coughs> that was an unexpected bonus of the fact that we moved to the travel hub. All right, in addition to that, we have a 48 pilot available. So we're going to go ahead and hire that pilot. And what that generally means is we got to get rid of a pilot when we pick up that pilot. So we're going to see level 42 is the lowest that we have. So <coughs> Captain Cochran, thank you for your service, but you're out. Okay, so we picked up a stalker, but now we're going to go back to Lee here, which is where we sold our Irby. So we're going to go back to Lee.
So if we go back to where we sold the Irby, as long as you travel back immediately, guess what you're going to find in the store? A fully restored Irby with its double heat sinks and its Ultra Cannon 5s. Yes, this is the same one that we sold that was stripped, but now it has everything again. So what do we do? We purchase it. Take it out of the mech bay. We put it in cold storage. We put it back into the mech bay. We go to the market. And what do we do? We sell it again. There we go. Alright, and then what do you do? Why? Travel. What the hell? We're not even going to look at the marketplace because we're immediately just going to go back to where we dropped off our mech. Now keep in mind, by using this trick, you are losing time and you are losing money because you have to pay your bills while you're traveling back and forth. All right, so we're back here again, where we sold the Irby, and it's back available again. So we purchase it again. Now you could do this as long as you have money to spend. So we're going to go ahead and put the Irby into cold storage again. We take this Thunderbolt that we had taken out of cold storage and we're going to put it back into active. We're going to have to rebuild that one. That's fine. <coughs> so let's take a look at our inventory now. So by doing that three times, right, look what we have. We have three ultra cannons, and we have 24 double heat sinks just by doing that maneuver three times. Now, you can do this, again, as many times as you want until you run out of money. Uh, for, the, for the video, I just wanted to do it a couple times so you can see how it works. Now, very important note, if you're going to do this, you can't leave for more than one travel and come back and expect to find the Irby. It, it could be purchased randomly by the computer. So you can only do it if you go to the closest system and then come back. Closest system and then come back to make sure that you're going to have it. Because there's always a, a small chance that the another AI character will purchase your K9 off of the market. So <clears throat> there you go. Now we got a whole bunch of double heat sinks. We have a whole bunch of ultra cannons. So before we move forward, bear with me here. We're going to have to rebuild our Thunderbolt, which is fine because I, I got some better weapons and I want to rebuild this thing anyways. So generally speaking, I don't like to put more than an LRM-10 on a mech that's going to be primarily used by the AI. Um, in my experience, the AI just doesn't use LRMs enough to justify more than an LRM-10 and a ton of ammo. That's usually about the best bang for your buck. Okay, so... Spam this thing with moving lasers. Now one thing I can do is I can actually put a large laser on this because if I have a mod that allows you to put 
large lasers in the small mod spot, obviously you still have to account for your tonnage. So I like to do that. So this is going to have a PPC, two large lasers, and the reason that we're able, to, or one large laser, and the reason we're able to do that is because we're going to add double heat sinks. We're going to add an SRM4. With a ton of SRM ammo, again, that's about the most that you're going to need. <coughs> now, it has two machine gun spots. I'd rather have the large laser than the machine gun spots, so I'm not going to worry about that. And we still have to put double heat sinks on this thing. So, do that right now. Really wish you could put double heat sinks here. You would think double means two. You should be able to put it in. But the double heat sinks require three spots, right? Okay. You know, I'm going to change what I said earlier. I could put that, keep that large laser on there, but I think I want the extra armor in here. So we're going to go ahead and just put the three medium lasers, PPC, LRM-10, SRM-4. This is a very solid Thunderbolt build, especially if the AI is going to use it. So we're going to max the armor, repair all. Now, actually, we have this unused tonnage. I'm not a huge fan of... machine guns, right? But we have the tonnage, so we're just going to go ahead and put those back on there. It's going to increase the firepower a little bit. Uh, yeah, technically we should put the machine gun ammo in the legs. We have another ton available. Let's go ahead and put another ton of SRM ammo just to make sure. That looks pretty good. Now I could do like a half a ton of LRM ammo, but I guarantee you this Thunderbolt is never going to run out of ammunition. So that's a pretty good build for the Thunderbolt. Again, we're going to keep the K9 in cold storage. So whenever we want to get some ultra cannons or heat sinks, we could just do the same trick again by selling it and then going back and buying it again. Um, so we're gonna leave that alone for now. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk to you about the Banshee. So let's take a look at that now. So this Banshee, again, this is the first time in Battletech history, whether it's Battletech, MechWarrior Online, MechWarrior, the previous versions, uh, etc. that I've ever purchased a Banshee because I've never thought it was worth it. As you can see, this one's got double heat sinks galore. This isn't what it came with. This is what I modified it to. So a whole bunch of double heat sinks because you want this is going to run hot almost constantly. It's got the double PPCs. It does have the AC-10 BF, but I'm going to change that right now. And it has small pulse lasers and an LRM-15, uh, LRM-10, and two medium lasers. We're going to make a small tweak right now, now that I have the Ultra Cannon available. And I love the Ultra Cannon. So we're going to actually take off the AC-10. Ultra Cannon 5. Oh, actually, I got to buy ammo for the Ultra Cannon 5. And it's not available here. It's not available here. So we're going to go back. We're going to leave it as it is because unfortunately, there's not ammo here for that Ultra Cannon 5. So we're going to have to keep an eye out for that as we travel. Um, but eventually, I'll put an Ultra Cannon 5 on here. 
So uh, all of our mechs are pretty much ready to go, except for that stalker. We've got our canine in cold storage. We also have a commando in cold storage, which we also is a hero mech, which had double heat sinks. So I've played that game before where I just take it back and forth and purchase double heat sinks. So, all right, so that's enough instructional stuff. Let's do some construction. So we've got um, plenty of missions right in here. So let's take an assassination contract and a defense contract. Alright, so we get to here. We've got a 32 defense and a 34 assassination. Let's go ahead and start out with that defense mission. As you can see, um, House Liao finally likes us a little bit, so we're actually starting to get some decent salvage from them. That's part of the benefit of grinding and taking your time, is dealing with those things. So we've got the uh, Banshee available. So I'm going to take that as my command mech so you can see how awesome that is. Um, this is a defense mission, so an Orion is actually really good for a defense mission because you don't have to worry about how slow it is. Let's see. Mm, we will also take a... Uh, a cataphract and a thunderbolt so that's a pretty pretty nice defense mission now this is a level 32 mission and people who have played this game before are going to say but wait how can you take that much tonnage on a 32 mission usually that would be considered a um, a mission where you would maybe take 110 or like 280 tonnage, something like that. Well, the difference is, is we have the mod downloaded, which allows us to have unlimited tonnage. So if you have a mech, you can drop the mech. Much more realistic than when they say, give you these arbitrary tonnage limitations, and they don't tell you why you can only take so much tonnage. So, okay. Okay, for some reason that cataphract is not loading in. Sometimes you have to switch the mechs. Because once you see those pictures, until you see all of your mechs loaded, see, it doesn't want to generate the cataphract. So we're just going to take an archer. That's fine for this level mission. Perfectly fine substitute for the cataphract. And as you can see, it's now successful in loading the mission. Until you see all your mechs generated in the mech bay, you're never going to finish loading the mission. So sometimes you have to click around. Sometimes you have to switch the mechs. There's a lot of things sometimes you have to do. All right, so now we, we got a new level 48 pilot. So we should make sure Captain Miles here is getting trained up. Sometimes you always want to make sure that you're using your highest available pilots unless you know that you're going to lose a pilot like say for example um, you're going to have to put out a Kentaro against assaults and you know just to get the tonnage right um, or maybe the Kentaro is the only mech that you have then maybe you would do a lower level pilot um, 
but with this tonnage mod that allows you to use unlimited tonnage, you don't have to worry about that so much. So you can always take your best pilots and feel pretty comfortable that you have enough mech around them that they're going to survive. All right, so we're fully loaded. Uh, I do want to double check uh, that I have the loadout correct on this Banshee. I'm just going to check the weapons groups. So we got the PPC on one. We have the AC-10, the medium lasers, and the small pulse lasers. I know that's a waste having the small pulses shoot sometimes when they're not going to be in range, but I don't like to push multiple buttons when I'm trying to command my mech. I'm going to take it off chain fire because I think I have enough heat sinks now that I could just shoot these all at once. And then we have the um, LRM-10 streaks on three. Just wanted to double check that before I launch. And you're going to see how fun this Banshee can actually be. Now it's going to run hot just because it has so many weapons available. So keep that in mind. But it really is a fun mech to fly, and I never thought, or pilot, and I never thought I would own a Banshee, to be honest with you. Every time I see a Banshee, whether it's in Battletech or Mech Warrior 5, I always said, eh, who wants to buy a Banshee? But this Banshee, as you can see, look at all those weapons. It it's, has a lot of potential. So we're going to defend that facility. Let's take a look at our heat. All right, so that's a double PPC shot. Gets me up to like 20. Let's look at all my other weapons firing at the same time. All right, it gets me up to about 17. So if I manage my shots correctly, I should be able to shoot those without too much trouble. Right, so we got this huge facility to defend. All right, here comes the first enemy drop. All right, what did you drop? What did it drop? There they are. So we'll have the rest of the Lance go after that Jenner. We've got a helicopter. Is that ours? No, it's the enemies. So let's get rid of that helicopter. All right, we got a locust there. Everybody, ugh, these buildings are taking a lot of damage already. Not the best start for us to get a bonus. All right, that locust keeps running away from me, so. I'm actually going to let the uh, rest of my pilots go ahead and get the kill on that one. All right, that should. All right. We have the next group coming in, looks like. Dropping right on top of me. All right, so I'm going to give them a locust to go after the rest of the lance. I'll take on this enforcer here. 
as you can see, I've got a lot of firepower per shot. Just shredded that enforcer pretty quickly. Just shredded that javelin, super easy. Because this mech just has so much firepower. I have to manage my heat. Even with all those double heat sinks that I put on this thing, it's still going to run hot. So I have to be smart about my heat. All right, we should have at least one more enemy here. The buildings have already taken a lot of damage, so we might not get our bonus by keeping this above 40%. Not that big of a deal. All right, here comes the next enemy drop. All right, we got two mediums, so I'm going to have them go after the rest of the lance, go after one medium. As you can see, they're going after the centurion. Go after the other medium. After I take out this helicopter. More to protect the facility than anything else. Come on, die helicopter. There we go. All right, that centurion's in pretty bad shape there. All right, but there should be another medium Oh, it's a cicada. All right, let's find that other cicada. Eh, we'll just finish off that centurion since it was right in front of me. What else have we got? I think we still have a locust running around. All right. We'll have everybody else go after the locust. I'm going to go after the cicada here. So much firepower on this Banshee. It's just really not fair. All right, got another round coming in. Dropping right in front of me. All right, I'm going to have everybody focus on the BJ, and I'm going to take this Griffin at long range. Might as well hit the BJ on the way to the Griffin. Look at that firepower. I mean, I could just wreck mediums all day long. Got an Igor there. Come on, guys. You should be able to take an Igor. There we go. All right, we got one more enemy mech available. Or one more target. It's probably... Oh, there's a Locust. We can avoid doing any more damage to the base. Unlikely. We can get the bonus here. There we go. So as you can see, this Banshee just has tons of firepower. Tons of it. Um, 
you can't fire as much as maybe you would like, but you don't have to because it has so much firepower per shot that you can just really be smart about how you, you use your energy. Really nice build. See if we got some. Ooh, we got some good salvage here, so we can get a javelin, a locust. All right, AC two and a medium laser. Nice salvage on this mission. Not too much damage for any of our lance. We can repair those pretty quickly. All right, we've got another mission available here, so let's take a look. Assassination mission. Decent salvage. All right, so I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I don't, uh, the Banshee doesn't have too much damage, so we're going to go ahead and just repair it, just because I want to take it out again. Um, let's see. Your Ryan's going to take too long to repair. That's fine. I just wanted to take out the uh, Banshee again. Purely just because I'm enjoying it and I'm learning the build, so it's worth it to me. So let's take the uh, we'll take the Cyclops. We'll take the Cataphract if it loads again. For some reason, the Cataphract it doesn't want to load. We'll take the Archer. All right, so it loaded the cataphract, but it didn't load the archer. So load the Jagramex. Will it load the Jagramex? Sometimes. There we go. So it loaded the Jagramex. Yeah, we'll take the Jagger mech here. All right, and it's being delayed while we work on the Banshee. That's fine. So we'll wait the six days. Because I, I just want to play with the Banshee again. It's a really fun mech, and I never thought I would say, wow, this Banshee is awesome. But you know what? This Banshee is pretty awesome. So... It's probably going to be my favorite command mech for now. Um, eventually, I'll find the King Crab, and the King Crab is my favorite mech in the game. Um, really love the balance that a King Crab can have if it has dual ACs. Um, and it's got a ton of armor. It's got armor all the way around. You know, generally speaking, I just love the crab. It's it's my favorite mech in the game. In a perfect world, I would have three king crabs. So I could use the king crab every mission as my command mech. This Banshee is giving it a run for its money. I really like this build.
All right, so we got multiple locations. All right, we can go to the target on the right. Kind of work our way around. All right, so each environment impacts your weapon, so you got to think about it intelligently. So this is a little warmer environment, so my PPCs get me up to 27. How about my um, other weapons combo? Get, gets me up to about 20. So we're going to want to use our PPCs in a smart way. Let's try that again. Yep. All right. Our Lance has plenty of firepower to deal with those pesky VTOLs. It's really funny when you have assault, assaults to have J. Edgars attacking you. Like, in what universe would a J. J. Edgar think that it should attack four assault mechs? Or should I say two assaults and two heavies? They just wouldn't do it. We're heading to the first location. One thing I would love to see in this game is in some of the story missions, you have a the ability to go into a repair bay, and they look a lot like this structure here. I wish you could find them on regular missions and activate them and do repairs. I think that would be a cool feature. Maybe they'll come up with a mod that allows you to do that. That would be a lot of fun. All right, we've got an Igor here. Watch dual PPC to the Igor. There goes the Igor. Love it. Love it. All right, so this isn't where we want to go. So. Kind of work counterclockwise, I think. You know, it's kind of funny. Counterclockwise, that's a description that some people just don't understand if they only look at digital clocks. I saw an interesting article that said many people cannot read a, cl a clock anymore. Uh, double PPC, down goes the Igor. I love that. I love the firepower of this Banshee. For example, see that radar tower? Or that radar dish? Boom, down, just like that. Wow, see, I gotta watch my heat here. Actually should take a minute to cool down. Just before we get to the next objective. Gotta watch the heat on this thing. I might be tempted to take out the small pulse lasers and just put an additional heat sink on this thing. That could be something to think about here. Oh, 
Although once I put a uh, rotary auto cannon on this, I should have the extra tonnage that I could put another heat sink on here, which I'll need for the double for the uh, ultra cannon. All right, our target is not there. That's fine. Each one of these bases we attack just increases the savage that we're going to have. So that's really not that big of a deal. Oh, a scorpion. Hitting me hard. Can't be that harasser. All right, let's take that harasser out, please. There we go. All right, we might as well keep working our way counterclockwise. I have a suspicion that the enemy we're looking for is in the center location. As you can see, the Banshee can rip through any structure. Here they come. The, our target was in the center. And our assassination target is coming to us. It's a trebuchet of all things. Trebuchet is going to last about three seconds against me here. go. Yep. Centurion. Got another lance that dropped. That's fine. More salvage for us. As you can see, that Centurion's got no chance against this build. Uh, we got a poor locust. go. Alright, so we might as well head towards the evac now. Not too much damage here, including on our Banshee. Our Banshee's armor is quite sufficient. 
Let's see how long. Can I overheat just by using the PPCs only? I don't think they'll recharge fast enough that I can't. Yeah, I won't overload just by using the PPCs only. How about my secondary weapons group? Nope, won't overload. It's when you combine the two, as you would expect, that your heat becomes a problem. We got a centurion, so I'm glad we stayed and fought that last lance. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gotten mech salvage here. So that's good. Virtually no damage taken on this mission. Look at that. That's pretty crazy. Very successful mission. Any mercenary would agree. Probably just pay the price on the repairs here because they're so small. I don't think I'll pay the repairs on the Orion. The Thunderbolts or the archer, because they're a little high. But doing these repairs means that we can take another mission before we go all the way back to the industrial hub. Um, but that's going to do it for this video. We're probably going to move over here to uh, probably do the demolition mission here then go back to Kamal here and do the defense contract and then go back to the industrial hub. Um, but we're going to pick that up on the next video. Please subscribe to our, our channels, Battletech Battles and Commando Gaming, and we'll see you next time.